just want to welcome you to the National Basketball Arena today with the under-16B men's final. We've clashed the end at taking on St. Oliver's from Drogheda. I'm joined here today with Jason Clean. How you doing, Danny? We see uh, scores 2-0 to start. St. Oliver's won the tip and managed to get an easy layup to start the game. It's always nice. And obviously the team we're up against here, Klausche Enda, they are the under-16B Cup champions this year. So hopefully these lads will be going to go back to back. Let's say there's a lot, a lot of familiar faces out there. I'm sure all of these young men are used to playing in the arena at this stage. I think actually on that day in the cup final, number 15 there, who just pulled the rebound, Malik Thiem, he was actually the, the cup MVP on that day. Yeah, he's a fantastic player. We'll, you know, he'll really look to assert himself early on in this game. He's certainly not shy anyway, Danny. Yeah, he likes to get the shots up, so does he. This was one of the games that was postponed because of the, the weather that we had recently with all the snow. Yeah, I can imagine. So obviously with the close to end, they've traveling across from Galway Lake. It mustn't have been pretty getting across that way. So Danny, uh, Klaus Enda playing the zone right now with Malik in the middle. I think when they have someone like him, obviously he's probably one of their better players, someone who really protects the rim, close up key, it's forcing St. Oliver's to take shots from the outside. Um, obviously, look, four minutes into the game, we've six minutes left in the first quarter, and only two points on the board. So he's probably a bit of nerves out there too. Lads have been waiting over two or three weeks to play this final, so both teams eager to get on the way. And that's it, you know, they, both teams would have been prepared to play the game a couple of weeks ago, but nothing we can do about the snow really and just looking at the arena Danny I know everyone loves to play up here but at times it can be tough you know the, the rings are a little different than what, what most gyms around the country yeah exactly and it's, I suppose it, it, people say in the, in the men's super league it makes a difference playing in the arena but definitely in schools basketball you know some of these schools are probably used to playing their home games in their school gym and things like that so to come into the arena on a day like today like there's a massive difference yeah and even the size of the court you know, we, talk, we talked about this in the European Championships, Danny. The, the, the court looks really nice now on the stream, and it looks really good. It's uh, the heart of Irish basketball now. No, it is, definitely. Love all the green along the baseline as well. It really stands out. James Webb is going to the line now, shooting two. Hopefully you get the first two points on the board for his team. Again, we've like five minutes, 42 seconds left in the first quarter, and it's still Oliver's lead on a scoreline at two to zero. It's first score of the game for Klaus Inda. It's always a nice way to settle the nerves a little bit too, get to the free throw line and knock down one of them. Yeah, that should give him some of the confidence. And obviously, we don't have a massive crowd here today in the arena, but in fairness to Klaus Inda, they seem to have brought out a couple of people anyway. But I mean, you know, there's probably like... 30 or 40 people over there supporting their school. That's it, when you have the chance to do the double. It doesn't come around very often, so fair play to these young men. Oliver's look to be playing a bit of his own too, keeping it packed, like making sure that they're, you know, they're all seem to be um Around number 15 there, Mali Tiem, just making sure like, that he doesn't get going. Yeah, it seems like a box and one on, on Mali. Again, you mentioned earlier, obviously, both teams knowing each other so well, and that probably comes to that. They probably played against each other, whether it be in the league or in the school's cup previous to this. They know their strengths and weaknesses. So, obviously, the Oliver's coach there now is thinking the best way to stop these is with the box and one and, you know, protecting the key. We'll just make it diff as difficult as possible for him, but... Yeah, you can see he's looking to get to the basket there, looking to get to foul, but unfortunately, like, there was, you know, one no foul call there. Things that he'll need to get that going. Like, that will frustrate him, like, if he's if he's not getting those kind of scores. Yeah, 
But look, we have four minutes left in the first quarter there now. Oliver's still lead on a score in two to one. It's very much like a soccer match so far with, li with little scoring opportunities. And we have a timeout here for uh, Klosch and... Uh, So I think both teams went into the timeout there. Coach is probably, you know, maybe putting some offense in play, seeing a way, what way they can break down these defenses because after after the first six minutes, both teams have been really, really good defense. So now Oliver's are coming up, looking to get something going. Let's see what the coach exactly put in from the timeout. Looks like as if they're going to try to get a bit of a high-low action there on the inside. Excellent two. That just shows that it was a good timeout. They're always the best ones, Jason. When you come out of a timeout and you get a score straight away, it just shows that the coach is doing some work. Well, that's it, exactly. And the coach will take a sigh of relief on that as well. Not so not so much luck with Closh uh, in now with their first offense out of the timeout. Again, I think, obviously, look, they're on the 16B Cup champions. You know, they have a lot to give here, so I don't think they'd be too worried with the scoreline so far. Oliver is looking to put up a three. Doesn't go. Rebound taken on the inside. And Oliver's are going to go to the line shooting too. Oliver's may have a small, small crowd here today, but uh, as soon as they see their team winning, they're getting behind them. I think it's the effort more than anything, isn't it? Every every good fan appreciates the effort on the floor. Exactly. Obviously, Josh Ola going after that offensive rebound, getting it, going right at Mali team, and obviously finds himself going to the line shooting too. First one's good for Ola. Can't get a second, but again, Oliver's with another offensive rebound, and another finds himself going to the line, shooting one. Clinton with an excellent offensive rebound there, really went strong to the basket, really good job to draw the foul. And I think Malik TM was, uh, was very fortunate there not to pick up his second foul. Yeah, I think he, he made a challenge to the ball, but obviously there was he wasn't the only one who, who, who probably committed the foul on that one. The foul didn't go against him that time, so he'll stay on one foul. Clash and again rims out. Their only score in the first seven minutes of his first quarter was that free throw by James Webb. But here they are on the break now. Open court. Webb again for two. Takes his total to three points. He'd be happy with that. Or 100% of the team points so far. And Webb featured quite well in the in the cup final up here in the arena as well. Then he had a fabulous game. So again, I suppose he will see that there. Okay, he probably looking to be the go-to person. He can see his team is struggling. Obviously, they came out of timeout, didn't have such such, such luck. So obviously, he'll be looking to see can he get some scores. But again, look at 7-3, two minutes 51 seconds to go. Still plenty of time. And if you look down there, Jason, just into the key. You can see that the Oliver's guys are really, you know, trying to, I suppose, front Malik TM, making sure that he doesn't get the ball. Mid-range jump shot there, no good, and we have a fast break down the other end. Excellent, too, excellent. I think we there, when he went to the basket, he understood there that Malik TM wasn't going to pick, get his second foul of the first quarter, so he really went strong to him, making him play defense on him. Good score. So it's Oliver's lead, 9-3. to 
and then move inside. Blocked away by Ojo. Another rebound taken by Olivers. If you look there on Olivers, there, number 13 for Olivers. He, he's really looking to leak out as soon as they get the ball. So I think the key, maybe Oliver's coach has said, like, let's try and fast break the ball. Let's not leave um, Klosh in. They get back, set up their zone defense. Obviously, as you mentioned at the start of the game, that Mali TM obviously is a big defensive presence in the key. So Oliver's are looking to push the ball in every opportunity they get, looking to get down the floor. So Webb puts up a three there, doesn't go. Rebound taken on the inside. Webb goes from the foul line. Two doesn't go. Clinton takes the rebound. Back to Ojo. Two doesn't go. I think Oliver's are getting a lot of offensive rebounds, you know. That will be the coach will definitely be an excellent two. Zane puts up a two. Forcing Klosh in that into another timeout. So coming out of time, oh, it's going to be Klosh in the ball from the end line. Obviously, their coach now will be hoping to seek and they get a stamp on the offense down here. Um, three points in the first quarter isn't a great return after 10 minutes of basketball. It just shows, obviously, that the Oliver's defense is really working. So Mali Thiem on the ball here now, looking to see can he get something going for his team. He puts up a long-range three, doesn't go on that attempt. And you know, Danny said Oliver's would be very happy with that attempt there. They're doing a great job of trying to keep Malik out of the game. And uh, Klosh and they're going to have to figure out how to put the ball in the basket without him. Yeah, exactly. Look, I think they're doing a really good job with their defense on the inside. James Webb again. That takes his total to five points. Oliver's now coming back. You can see the Oliver's crowd. They were quiet at the start, but they can see them, th their team in a the lead. They're really coming into it. And that's an excellent score on the inside by Clinton. He's the captain of St. Oliver's. Oliver's lead, we got 18 seconds to go. 17 seconds to go in the quarter, and we're gonna have a clutch end the ball from the end line. Now Klosh didn't have to go to full second quarter without using a timeout because they've used their two timeouts which they have in the first half, and they've used that in the first quarter due to their lack of scoring. Excellent score there from Klosh, and then they have it back to us. They have seven points in total now. Zane moves inside. Excellent two off the glass. We'll be right back for the second quarter.
So back with the second quarter here now. We're going to have St. Oliver's ball. St. Oliver's obviously leading on a scoreline of 17 to 7. Um, Jason, just in them timeouts there, is there anything in particular you think that the clutch and the coach would have been saying to his guys? Yeah, you know, they started uh, getting some shots up there late in the, in the first quarter, and I think he'll really want Malik TM here to start getting going. And there he does, just as you said it. Malik TM puts the ball in the basket for his first two of the game. I think he'll be happy with that. If you notice now, Klaus Jinder have switched up to a man-to-man -man rather than playing the zone, which they played in the first quarter. I think the reason for that is obviously giving up 17 points here in the in the, in the first quarter. Probably the coach of uh, Klaus Jinder won't be too happy with that. He'll be trying to maybe keep him down to maybe a 10 or 11 points per quarter. Webb. Lodged in now with five points already in the quarter. Nearly as much as they scored in the, f in the full first quarter. So that's an excellent start. Now it's back to 17 points. Plays 12. And you know, Danny, they're starting to show us why, why you're wider in the final. You know, and wider the, the Ren and Cup champions. Yeah, you can see like even there they got a good call there where the ball got knocked out of bounds. And you can see obviously the excitement in the players like, you know, th that it is working for them. And we'll be right back here. We have a timeout on the floor. So we got 6.57 remaining in the first. When we clash to end the ball. Obviously, they'll be happy with how the start of the second quarter went. They got the back to a five-point game. Oliver's lead 17, plays five. Webb is on the point now for them. Moves inside. Tries to find Malik. Unfortunately, he steps out of bounds. It's interesting to see, obviously, how both teams kind of uh, change in defence. Played one defence for the first quarter. No trials for the second quarter. Um, I, I think, you know, the, the, the teams know each other so well that I think they're going to try and change things up just to keep things fresh on the court. Well, that's a, and it's a positive sign for the level of coaching that we're seeing as well, that they're not just relying on the zone. You know, we, we do unfortunately see some teams that just want to play zone and sit back, but it's, it's nice to see that the teams are able to switch it up. Yeah, exactly. And look, it just shows, it makes the, the, the offensive side of the coaches out there. It's like, OK, if you're going to play man-to-man, -man, now let's see what I can do against this. But, you know, really good to see. Um, just not that obviously Oliver's put the ball in the basket again. I think with the man to man there, Oliver's do have a slight edge on the inside. A couple of big athletic guys there that like to get off after, off the yeah, offensive rebounds. But it can be tough with that big guy inside, Danny. Yeah, here he is again now on the point. I think those type of shots, I think uh, Oliver's will be happy with that, you know, forcing shots, no offensive rebounds in there, let, get, letting them get the ball and get out and run. Well, excellent two down this end then. Oliver's back out to nine. Claus in the start of this quarter, the better. After that time out there, the Oliver's coach, whatever he said to his troops, he really rallied them. And obviously they got a back out to a nine point game. We have a jump ball on the floor here, and possession arrow will go to Klaus Stender. You just noticed there, as soon as the referee blew the whistle there, number 13 there for St. Oliver's. Um, he was out of the blocks, ready to go. You can see, obviously, the coach is really looking to run that fast break, looking to score before the other team gets back. We we'll have another inline ball here. I was just checking there. Was it a two shots? It wasn't. The referee called the foul as he was going to the basket, and not necessarily as he was going to release the ball. So Mali TM. You can see there. There's only two players around him when he has the ball. 
I think that's going to be the strategy from the from the Olivers. I think they'll be happy with how the first first quarter and a bit have gone. Obviously, he's only probably at two points at this stage, so they'll be happy with how they're kind of controlling him. Another excellent two down this end from Olivers. And that's it, Danny. I'm sure Oliver's game plan is to make some, if, if they're going to lose, make somebody other than Malik TM beat them. And, you know, they're doing a good job of that so far. The Oliver's defense here is like, they're quite disciplined, even obviously as the referee just inbounds the ball here to the Eclosh. And the lads, you can see even the lads between themselves are communicating, you know, everyone knows the spot, everyone knows where they need to be. That's a really good sign at this level, like, you know, how tuned in they are on defense. A lot of kids, all they want to do is kind of play offense and uh, shoot three-pointers and things like that, but it's really good to see how much time they're giving into the defense. Excellent drive to the basket there, excellent drive. So Clinton will go to the line, the captain, and he's going to shoot two after that one. And then you'd wonder if the, the extra week or two of preparation is helping with the defensive end of the floor. You know, it gives them extra time to, to zero in on certain players and their traits and how to guard them in the game. Well, look, it's definitely working for them because obviously you can see the only 12 points they've given up, given up. They've scored 24 at this stage, so it's really, really good. Job. And it's not even as the defense is doing so well, they're forcing them to take some really, really tough shots. Uh, Clinton's going to be called there from just breaking over the line too early on the shot. So going to have Klosh end the ball from the sideline. Danny, we had a, a slight technical issue there on the on the stream. It had up quarter one up until this point, but it is 24-12 to St. Oliver's with four minutes 30 left in the second quarter. Now Klosh end the inbound the ball here from the sideline. Again, ball into Malik. They're looking to run a couple of ball screens for him, seeking to get him open. Excellent defense there from Oliver. As you can see, there's only two or three guys around him. Forcing the turnover again. You can see on that there, obviously, the Oliver's coach stood up on that, gave a clap to his guys, shouting, well done, well done. That just shows, obviously, Jason, as you said, putting in an extra time on defence and training. Obviously, what he has put in is working today because it's like a good call for him there, obviously, to see that they're forcing the turnover. Well, that's it. And even he had the ball in the corner and you see three black shirts around him. It's, it's, it's tough to operate against that. Yeah, I think this is an opportunity now where, as you mentioned earlier, some of the other clash then the guys really need to step up now and see because it didn't it is five and five out there so if there's three players surrounding one there has to be one or two guys open that can take them open shots oliver is now again looking to finish the half strong clinton the captain three rims out james webbs takes the rebound for clash enda blocked away zane on the point Excellent pass, come out of the double teams, finds Clinton. Zane again. Floats it up for two, doesn't go. Webb takes the rebound. I think Oliver's are definitely, like, from looking, are definitely the more fast-breaking team of the two that are out there today. Um, Any time Klosh didn't get the ball down, it seems to be like a set offense, and they're getting a shot against the five. Whereas Oliver's are getting a lot of their scoring opportunities when they don't even play. Out. That's an excellent score there, Jason. An excellent score. Again, the captain. And you really get the sense that uh, Oliver's are getting their energy from the defense. You know, they're they're very happy with what they're doing on the defensive end, and it's translating to the offense. Exactly. You can see there number eight. There is out Mark and Mali TM. The rest of the guys. Some of them are in a kind of a man-to-man -man principle. Some of them are in like a zone. But you know, whatever they're doing is really work from out the moment. Number eight, Ben O'Sullivan's going to check into the game for them. Obviously, the co coach of Clash End is probably going to look down the bench, looking to see, all right, we're down 14 points. There's two minutes 58 to go in the half. Who have I got here on the roster that can come in and really, uh, you know, help us and try and finish this half strong? Well, and, and knock down an open shot, you know. Exa I think he can see, I think the coach can see, obviously, like, so, some of the guys out there, you know, maybe hasn't hit that open shot. He's probably looking to see, let's get the shooters in there. They had Klosche in there, ran the fast break, unfortunately couldn't finish the play. Mali TM ran the floor, got the offensive rebound, couldn't finish the play. But on 
on one side of the floor, Malik TM obviously come up short, missing that layup. And then the other side of the floor, the captain, Clinton, number 11 for Oliver, is going down the floor, putting two in. Now it's a 16 point game, and it's Oliver's who lead. If you look now, Jason, obviously the lead is uh, stretching there at every opportunity it is. But obviously Oliver still have one timeout left. Whereas because Klaus Enda had such a tough start to the game, they used their two timeouts. So now the coach is very heavily relying on making the substitution to, to change the game. He can't necessarily call a timeout. He can't get the players off the court. And he can't really, you know, communicate with them through that. He needs to make the substitution. And hopefully that the sub going onto the court will bring something to the game. Yeah, that's it. And Coach Dara Creighton, you know, he'll be really looking forward to half time now and having a couple of minutes alone with the team to talk through strategy. Malik TM there, a little frustrated on offense, and you know, you don't want to see that from your from your star player either. Yeah, I can see that there. Look, if you look in, there's two or three players around them, and um, they're doing a really good job, Oliver's getting on the defensive glass. Just they're limiting basically Lush in to one shot every time. Well, Sullivan now just after coming into the game for them. Back to Webb. Webb again, another one, as you mentioned, another one of the stars of this team. He seems to be heavily pressed. That's really good to see. Two players diving on the loose ball. You can see here, all right, both teams, as you mentioned, you know, waiting over two weeks to play this game. So they're really eager, and both teams, you know, want to give 150% for their teams. Clinton on the inside. Two doesn't go. Mali TM comes away, but he's going to look to run the break for himself. Excellent defense there. Excellent defense. So we one minute ten to go in the half, and it's Alvarez lead twenty-eight players twelve. James Parnell to inbound the ball to Webb. Webb for two. You know, with the second half coming up now, I'm sure Webb will be looking to do that an awful lot more with the attention being drawn away by Malik TM. Yeah, and as you mentioned, obviously the coach will probably be eager to get him in and, you know, point him up because they're in there, right? They're still 15 year old lads. They will need their coach at times, obviously, to pull him aside and say, look, these are the opportunities there for you. It's now your opportunity, to now it's your chance to step up. Excellent rebound there in the inside again by Malik TM. With that jump ball, we're going to have the St. Oliver's ball. So we've got 42 seconds remaining in the half. It's going to be Oliver's ball from the end line. Klaus Schindler are still in a man-to-man. -man. And really good job by Clinton to get to the line there for two. That does happen to be the second foul that's going to go on Mali TM. Uh, there's no chance that foul could go on anybody else. That was all him, I think, on that occasion. Seemed like a frustration foul there. Yeah, I think so. Look, at, on, on the offense, things aren't dropping for him. But on, on the defense there, Oliver's doing a really good job there in the man-to-man. -man. They're making him play defense because Clinton does seem to be the go-to person in the last couple of moments for um, St. Oliver's. So, obviously, Manny TMB probably the, the offensive threat that Klaus in the have. And then, obviously, on the defensive end, he really needs to work hard again to to control his own defender. Again, yeah, just a block shot there, a sign of the good um, defensive stuff that St. Oliver's are doing in this first half. 30 points to 14 with 24 seconds remaining. Again, knocked out of bounds. Uh, Coach is happy with that. They probably could have got a steal and could have went down and got a score, but he's happy that the defense is still working. They're getting hands in the passing lane. Again, as mentioned earlier, number 13, he's looking to leak out at every opportunity. So we've got eight seconds remaining. One of Klosh in the ball. They'll be looking to get a score here. Just to finish the half strong. And it's James Parnell. So we got 4.9 seconds to go. And we want to have Klosh in the ball from the sideline. And a score here for Klosh. And it could do him the world of good going into the half. 
Yeah, you can see Manny Tiam is really looking to get the ball here. If you look down, it looks now as if uh, St. Oliver's are in like a triangle in two, where Webb and uh, Mali Tiam are really the ones who are going to be, really the guys who are being pressed. Unfortunately, didn't get a shot off, so they will go down in on the half with a scoreline of 30. The play is in, in that's 14. We'll be back for the second half shortly.
So we're back with the second half here now. Clush in on the ball and they're losing at a scoreline of St. Alvarez 30, plays them 14. Just a look at the, the score sheet there for the first half. And it's a Clinton O'Fanoil with 11 points for St. Oliver's. And then on the other end, the top scorer is James Webb with 8 points. Obviously, we mentioned a few times at the start of the game about uh, Clash in as the go to guy, Mali Tiem. Oliver's actually doing a really good job, and they held him to 2 points in the first half. So, again, I think him for his own personal tally, he won't be too happy with that. I think he'll be looking to get, get going early in the second half to try and help his team. So he comes up short in that one, and again, it's a rebound taken by. Uh, Wade Essejabar. Excellent offense there by Oliver. Really good use of the pump fake. I don't think coming into this game, I don't think Oliver would thought at this stage in the game that they would have a 20 point lead. And on the other end, I don't think Ender would have thought they'd be done with this much. But again, Mali TM gets a second basket game, takes him to four points. Still plenty of time in this game, so I think uh, Klosh Inna will be looking to see can they get some offense going and get some scores. Well, that's it. I'm sure St. Oliver will be very happy with the first half, but bo both teams, quality sides, you know, and capable of putting scores up on the board, so there's plenty of time left. And yeah, as we were saying that there, Webb just went to the basket to take his total to 10 points. Again, Clinton off the deal, drives inside, takes his total to 13 points. Really, really doing a good job on the offense for his team today. And again, you notice on the defense, they're trying to kind of play a triangling too. Leaving uh, Clinton at the back, he's probably picking up 50% of the defensive rebounds for his team. And then on the other end, he's doing a lot of the offensive scoring, so really good to see. They're not easy baskets either. That last one was tough with the big man coming across, trying to block it. Yeah, you can, uh, you can see though, as they get to the basket, like he's following, he's going after every offensive rebound. Really good to see. So Wade Essejabar will go to the line shooting two. And just as that drive to the basket there, that was actually another foul on Mali TM, so that's actually going to be his third personal foul. Esther Jabbar goes one for two. TM takes the rebound. And he looking to go for two on the other end. Really good job by Mali TM. Got the defensive rebound. All it to Webb. And he was the second person down the floor to finish the play. Taking his total to six points. Really good to see. Really good to see, even though his team are done by 17 points, that they're really looking, you know, to keep going and try, try to get this game as close as possible. And Danny, I think we'll have to watch that one back because I didn't see how he got down the floor that quick. <laughs> it's like he had a shortcut or something. He's setting a new standard for big men all over the country now. It might be time to retire soon. You notice though that I think um, the clutch and the coach is taking a leaf out of the St. Oliver's coach's book. You notice there in the first half they didn't really get many fast fast break opportunities, but already here after the last first couple of minutes, they've probably had two or three fast break opportunities. Really good to see. Excellent defense there by Malik Tiem. He knew he couldn't foul. He jumped straight up, closed, um, forced the defensive uh, stop, got the rebound, and drew the foul. Really, really good to see. And now on the other end, we've Clinton off the He's going to take two personal fouls. So, again, two of the key guys are really in foul trouble here. James Parnell with an excellent two there, taking his total to six points. And, you know, for Klosh and uh, step up, make the open shots like that, you know, you're not going to bring back the 15 points in one possession. You've got to chip away at it. Yeah, no, I really, really do um, agree with that. Because you can see, I think what will happen is they're going to see that they're going to get more open shots. And the more open shots they get, the more they can make, you know, the easier it makes it. What will also happen is um, St. Oliver will probably have to look to change up their defence. I don't think the coach of Oliver is going to be sitting down there and he, if he sees that other guys like uh, James Parr are knocking down these open shots. He's probably going to re need to rethink his triangling two defense, and he might need to come out and play a man-to-man -man or something. Well, that's it. And for Saint Denda, you want to force that. You want to force that thought process from the other team. It'll be interesting now if they can get this game back under ten and how how it'll swing after that. 
They're kind of sitting back in the zone defense here now, forced St. Oliver's to take that outside shot. Excellent movement inside, excellent movement inside. Clinton off a deal there, really good cut to the basket, finding for two. And we're going to take a timeout here on the court. So you've got 4.16 remaining in the third. Going to be Klausia in the ball. Down by 17 points. They'll be looking to come up here now, get an offensive score, get a defensive stop, and then see where that leaves them. So it's Webb on the point. Parnell moves inside. Mali team. You think he got called for a travelling violation there. Didn't actually see that call by the referee, but I think that went down was a travelling. That was uh, before Malik got the ball. So we're back with Oliver's on the point here now, and Zane running the point. Clinton off the really good distribution of the ball again to find two. The last two scores never come to two assists from him. Driving inside, forcing the Mali TM to kind of pay attention to him, releasing it to his, up to his, his uh, partner, putting the ball in the basket. Really good to see. Again, Danny, that's the scouting report done well. Excellent block there by Malik. I think the Oliver's coach will be really happy how his defense has held up with three quarters into this game, only giving up 22 points. It's really, really good to see. On the other end, Josh Olin knocks down with two. That's 43 points now in total for Oliver's. So it's 43 plays 22. Parnell moves inside, knocks down two. You can really see how disciplined the Oliver's guys are in the defense. There was times there where there's a player in position where normally you would go and play defense on them, but you know what they're doing? They're staying back and they're kind of protecting the key. They're not gambling, they're not contesting some of the outside shooters, and they're forcing them to take that wide open outside shot hoping that they do get the defensive rebound. So it's really good to see how, how disciplined the guys can be. Let's, uh, we're definitely getting a, a view into the scouting report. So Josh Ola goes to the basket there, draws the foul. He's going to find himself going to the lane shooting two. We've got 2.47 remaining in the third quarter here now. Ben O'Sullivan got called for that foul. That's going to be his second personal foul. So I think this 2 minutes 47 seconds is going to be huge for Klaus to end that. We're currently at 44 plays 24, so it's a 20 point game. So if St. Oliver's keep going at this rate for the next 2 minutes 47 seconds, it could be too much of an uphill battle in the final quarter. And the other end, if Klaus to end it, can get a couple of baskets together in the last 2 minutes 47 seconds, get a couple of defensive stops, obviously. As you mentioned earlier, Jason, get this down to about a 10-point game. This can look a lot differently. But the offense really needs to start now. Excellent fast break there again by Oliver. It's really good to see. And it's rare you see that, actually, the five guys um, up, the, up the court running the fast break all together. 
And that's uh, what's interesting is St. Oliver's sticking to the game plan. You know, they're still running the fast break. Being up 20, clock is on their side. You know, a lot of coaches might ask them to step back a little bit and use the shot clock. Yeah, and just on that call there, it's the main man there, Clinton O'Fidil, went down, but it seems to be okay. Seems to be like a, as if he got knocked over as Malik drove to the basket, but he seems all right. You see there now, uh, Klosh in to have come out with a full court press. As mentioned, I think the coach realises that that 2 minutes 47 seconds is really important, so he's looking to see, can they put some pressure on the defence, or uh, sorry, on the offence, forcing some turnovers, get the ball back in their hands so they can put the ball in the basket. He drives baseline, knocked out of bounds. So you got 156 remaining here now in the third. Oliver's to inbound the ball. Doesn't go. Mali takes the rebound. He moves inside. Can't scoop to two. On the other end, Clinton Ophidil takes the rebound. Clinton's going to be called for an offensive foul here. I think as he was trying to dr drive past James Webb, he threw the hand out to push him off. Yeah, you know, it looked like a foul, but it was a bit of a, a reaction play, I think. Yeah, that's going to be the third foul him. The only thing on his end, I think, is the fact that his team are winning by 20 points. If the coach needs to get him out for a minute, he does have that, you know, does have that opportunity to get him out. Another excellent rebound taken by Oliver's. They really haven't given up too many offensive rebounds. Five men on the offensive or the defensive glass, and then five men running the floor. It's really good to see that style of basketball. Malik again goes inside for two. I think he realised that Clinton Ophidil couldn't really play defence on that because he is on three folds. So Malik used that to get to the basket. Down this end, Zane with an excellent inside-out move. Again, knowing that Malik Yem couldn't really commit to foul, but he gets to the basket for two. Really good basketball out of the last two offences. Malik drives inside, skips through for two. Seen some excellent basketball there over the last minute of this basketball match. Both teams really showing like how good they can be on offense. Parnell. It's a little bit strong. I think Webb looked up. He's seen Parnell in, in the open floor, so he tried to hit him on that uh, full court pass. Would have been a lovely two. And again, I think they're the baskets that Klosh in the need if they're going to get back in this game. They need to be scoring without having to break down the defence because, as we mentioned, Glosh St. Oliver's um, defence is so disciplined, the coach knows exactly what he wants to do, it's very hard to break him down. They need to be scoring the basketball before the other team has a chance to get back and play. So we've got 12 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Webb, Parnell drives inside, blocked away. And he ended three, St. Oliver's lead on scoreline, 48 plays 30. We'll be back to you shortly with the fourth quarter.
And we are back, Danny. Fourth quarter, getting underway. It scores 48 St. Oliver's, plays uh, 30 St. Enda. Yes, Clash so Enda. Yes, we have um, eight minutes of basketball. Will Clash Enda come back? Can they be the double champions in 2018? Or will it be St. Oliver's there? So straight away, Mali TM on the inside puts in the two. Down to a 16-point game. You see again, Clash Enda are looking to go with that fast, or sorry, looking to go with that full court uh, defense as well. They're looking to see can they get defensive stops. Now, this is the opportunity you know, where we're going to see um, obviously what the coaches Ed Alvarez has against the press. Does he have something that can break down the press? You know, will it's will their offense still work even though that um and they are up in the pressure? There has to be a real sense of urgency from Clash Enda here. Like we said, eight minute quarters for under 16s basketball. There's, there's not a, the time isn't on their side at the minute, so they really have to go for it. No, I think that's exactly what they'll be looking to do. Unlucky there on in the inside from Ben O'Sullivan. That would have really helped the guys out. Now, Oliver's. I think Oliver's strategy here now will be take their time on the offense. Excellent pass inside. Really good ball moving there by the point guard Zane. You know, I think he's very low to the ground, really good dribbler of the basketball. He he puts a lot of eyes on him, forcing that he can just make an easy pass for the layup. Really good to see. And the, the cutting of St. Oliver against his own is very good as well. Cutting into the open spaces and getting easy layups and open shots. Yeah, I think that's that's been the key from here, like especially playing against his own. Sometimes against his own, the back of the zone or the weak side in the zone, sometimes you know can uh, can fall asleep what Oliver's doing they're capitalising on that and here you have Clinton off a deal with an excellent steal looking to get to the basket so we got 6.24 remaining it's 20 point games 52 plays 32 I think close to end the coach realises that it wasn't working so they're going to try to change it up we'll be back after this time out for the last 6 minutes We're back for the final six minutes and 24 seconds of this game. So that time over scored by Klaus Jenda. They've one time out left in the game. I think what the coach is trying to do is to say, it's this now, it's kind of now or never, guys. We really need to start going now because the longer you leave it, the harder it is to come back. Mali TM to inbound the ball. James Webb moves inside. O'Sullivan, the two doesn't go. Clinton off a deal. Again, Weed Esco Jabbar. I think that was a, definitely a game plan for St. Oliver's. Anytime a re, they, were, they were securing the defensive rebounds, Weed Esco Jabbar was kind of leaking out, looking to get that easy quick two for them. Molly Tim with a lovely use to the left hook down on the other side, keeping his team in it. It's 54 plays 34. And you know, Danny, when a team is doing that against you, it's very hard to offensive rebound. You know, so a lot of times Klosh and they are getting one shot and they're, and they're racing back trying to stop the, the fast break on the other end. Yeah, and it's, you can see it's like St. Oliver's are kind of scoring before Klosh and they have a chance to put their defense in action. 
Fouls drawn there. Weed S. Jabbar is going to take the ball up from the end line, I think, on that one. So again, we're here all day. We have four games in total to cover. So if any schools are out there are watching or are tuning in to watch the schools' league finals, make sure you tweet us at Basketball Ireland. We'll be sure to give you a shout out. Josh Ola is going to go to the line shooting two now for his team. In some way, Jason, this is actually really good to see. Obviously, Klaus ended the cup champions uh, coming into this. Probably would have been the favourites after winning the cup. But it's good to see that on another day, another team can step up and actually, you know, probably be the more dominant team. And that's it, and it's two quality teams, but, you know, a lot of credit goes to both coaching staffs here as well. There's obviously a lot of work has gone in over the last couple of weeks to prepare for the game. Mali TM takes the rebound in the inside, and he's going to draw the foul. Obviously, people need to remember, this is under 16B basketball, okay, and we have two teams have some great athleticism out there and show some great elements of basketball. Like on that last possession there, obviously, rebound went, or shot went up. Mali TM got the offensive rebound, couldn't finish the first time. Went, went again. It's really good to see. And you're exactly right, Danny. And I think it's a, that's a conversation we could have about Irish basketball as a whole. You know, it's, it, it is getting better nationwide. Our top leagues, the Super Leagues, men and women, are getting more competitive every year. And obviously our international teams... I've been competing in Europe more and more over the past couple of years. Yeah, and it probably does come down to how competitive the school's basketball has become as well. Like, you know, obviously some of these players probably played against each other now today. And in any year's time, they'll be going to Irish trials against each other and so on and so forth. So guys are guys know what they're up against. I'm sure um, on one end that Clinton Ophadil, coming into this game, he knew that uh, Mali Tiem was one of the main players. So that's he really stepped up today for his team. So we got just four minutes, 45 seconds remaining, and it's Oliver's lead, 58 plays, 36. Ball gets knocked out of bounds, going to be an Oliver's ball. One thing is interesting there about Oliver's, even though winning by 22 points, four and a half minutes to go, and at some stages in the game, this is where the coach might say, you know, relax, uh, take some time out of the clock, but the guys are still playing at the same pace they played when they started the game. Just shows that that's the way that that coach likes to play and it's really good to see that the guys just keep going at that pace for the whole game and like you said the time against slash and uh, four minutes 23 seconds left down by 22 you know St. Oliver's will be uh, very justified to sit back and use the shot clock and move the ball around the top but he's still playing that fast paced basketball which is great to see And again, they haven't switched off on the defence. Again, so disciplined the defence. As we look down on his clash, end to come down the floor. You can see there, Clinton Ophidil is really taking up his, his presence in the key. Um, you know, and I think that was something, obviously, that the coach wanted St. Oliver's to do. You know, the guys were out there marking some of the key players first, and then that. Well, any time if the key players did get beat, it wasn't that easy. Clinton Ophidil really kind of protected the key for his team. Obviously, Malik, Malik TM goes to the basket there. Now he draws the foul, shooting two. But I'm just that position. I think that just showed the type of defense that has been played. Malik TM didn't get anything easy here today. Any of the baskets he got with our offensive rebounds, he really had to work from. That's just a credit to the defense played by St. Oliver's. Malik rims out on the first one. Fortune goes zero for two. I think that's sign of missing two free throws there, but Malik probably shows the fatigue too as well. You know, it's been a long game for him. Um, a lot of defense being played on him. Obviously, that would have taken his toll on a player. Yeah, and you know, he came in here. The last time he played in here, he was MVP, had a great game. So he, he certainly would have been thinking about that coming into the game, about stepping up and, you know, putting the ball in the basket, having a good game. And credit to St. Oliver's defense. They really took him out of his game the whole today. 
Yeah, you can even see there, like, he's on the opposite side of the floor now, not even involved in the offense. And Josh Ola is, is full full denial on him, just not, giving, not even giving him an opportunity if he does decide to get the ball. Again, rebound taken by Weed, Esa Jaber. Oliver's, no, I think this is the first stage all game we've seen him actually move the ball around and take some time out the clock. Webb comes away with it. Webb in the inside for two. I think there's about three minutes to go here in, in the game. Both teams are actually looking a bit tired out there. A couple of missed shots. Um, the fast break, not, not, not every five, five players are running the floor as they were in the first quarter. Zayn, excellent move inside. He's going to go to the line for the bonus, trying to get one. So we're going to take the last time off for Klosch, end of the game. So we've got 2.48. We'll be back just after this short. Welcome back here to the fourth quarter. Two minutes, 48 seconds left to go. The score is sent Oliver 60, the clash ended 38. Zane is going to go to the line seeking to get that bonus. Just for the time out, obviously he got to the basket, made the layup, drew the foul, really good to see. Takes their total to 61 points in Oliver's. Jason, that's actually a good turnout for scoring. Obviously, as we mentioned, it's an eight-minute quarter. Obviously, there's under 16 basketball. To be scoring 61 points at this stage of the game is really good offense to see, isn't it? Really good offense, but I think St. Oliver's have done a fantastic job playing against the zone and preparing against the zone. You know, you see the likes of Malik TM in the middle of the zone can be really off-putting for a lot of teams, that big body. But uh, St. Oliver's have certainly worked on it and they've done a great job all game. Yeah, credit to the players and to the coaches after St. Oliver's, obviously, for the good job they've done today. James Parnell on the other end puts in two for his team. Well, it's good to see, obviously, Glossian, that they haven't dropped the heads. They keep going playing till the end. It just shows that, you know, that probably that is the reason why they were the Cup champions earlier on this year. James Webb now on the point. Unlucky that that one didn't go for him. And he's going to get called for a foul after that. So now at this stage again, 140 to go. Clash in, they're actually in foul trouble, they're in the penalty. So that's going to be their fifth um, team foul. So what's going to happen now is Oliver's are going to walk the floor and they're going to shoot two. That foul there on Webb is actually going to be his fourth personal foul as well. And Danny, with such a team effort from St. Oliver's today, you know, it's going to be tough to pick an MVP. Yeah, exactly. I think there's a few players that probably stand out, you know, um, Obviously, you know, Clinton Ophidil, he done a really good job on defensive and the offensive glass. And obviously Josh Ola, who is the guy who picked up Mali Tim for most of the game. You know, his effort has been outstanding. And obviously on the point, um, Zayn there, he really ran the show for him. And I, I suppose, again, one to mention is Weed Essa Jabbar. 
obviously number 13 as I mentioned he ran the fast break better than anybody else for him he was probably their top scorer so like it is really really going to be hard to call I think with this St Oliver's team we really seen a team effort out there today there was no real uh, one person that shut out from it was a real team effort it was really good to see Plenty of scores on the on the court as well. You know they really took advantage of the open shots. They took advantage of the space against the zone on offense. Yeah, I think they, they were a really good fast breaking team. I think if that if I was to sum them up in one thing, I think that would be the thing that would stand out for me today with St. Oliver's. How oh, well they fast break the ball. Um, like always, as you know, Jason. Like the key to fast breaking the ball is securing your defensive rebounds, and that's something that they done really well. Well, that's it, and you really have to trust that back line to get the rebound because if you're leaking out. And the offense crashes the board, you know, they get offensive rebounds and they can punish you for it. Yeah, they done they done really well on that. Just securing the rebounds, getting out and running, it was you know, excellent stuff. Webb comes away with a steal. Finishes off for two. Wade Esther Jabbar can't get it to go. Mali TM takes the rebound. We just got 40 seconds to go in on the game. Mali TM drives inside, two doesn't go. Again, two doesn't go. I think that really just sums up his uh, performance there on Mali TM, you know. Just didn't get the shots to drop that he normally would. As that shot goes up there just before the shot clock runs out, we got 10 seconds remaining in the game. So on this one, it's Oliver's are going to run over and score on a 61 to 44. The Oliver's crowd just getting into it there as the final buzz is going to sound. And the St. Oliver's are going to be under 16B champions.